Good day, fish tankers. Let's talk aquarium substrate. You know that stuff on the bottom of your aquarium that is not necessarily, but not excluding fish poop. The stuff that your plants grow out of. Now, you don't need substrate in an aquarium. Many breeders and shops have bare bottom tanks, and that's fine for that purpose. But as a display tank, it just looks a little bit sad. Sometimes you also have fish that don't go well in planted aquariums, like goldfish that's always sifting through the gravel or... Uh, shoal dwellers that's digging in the sand and in that case your best bet is to forget about plants and just put in some epiphytes like anubias so this is not a video for that because then it really doesn't matter what kind of substrate you use as, lo as long as it's this kind of stuff that your fish would appreciate or maybe you have something that alter the water quality the way you want, uh, want to now if you're a be beginner and, you, and even if you're no longer a beginner and you want to do a planter tank it can get confusing because you've got people that so you've got to use only Amazonia Aquaswell. Other people swear by dirt tanks. You can't quite figure it out because dirt doesn't sound right. And then there are others that just use gravel. And another guy would say you can never use gravel or just sand. So I'm going to break it down into the three main ways of doing planted aquarium substrates. But I'm also going to tell you what are the pros and what are the cons of each method. If that sounds interesting, stick around. First up we have inert substrate or gravel or sand just in plain language, but by far the most common. Where does gravel begin and sand end? That's gravel there on the right. This seems more like sand. This is definitely gravel and here's sand again. When is it sand and when does it become gravel? That's gravel. This is definitely gravel and some more gravel as well. And they're inert because they have no chemical water chemistry altering properties and they don't contain any nutrients like this black sand over here. And then there, of course, is my favorite sand that's listed as gravel on the packet, but it's about one millimeter grain size. This is called caviar. My company called Flamingo. I regard it as sand, but you could say it's coarse gravel. And then this is half millimeter grain size. This is definitely sand. I don't like any smaller than that. I don't like the powdery sand. Now, you can use it just like that if you're going to use epiphytes, but don't get planted in the substrate and just get attached to rocks or driftwood, like the Anubias or the Java fin here. That's what my 75 used to look like years ago. See, it's just a sort of a fine gravel on the bottom and Java fin attached to driftwood, and it worked very well. But then you have to add liquid fertilizer. Now, I like Seachem products in general. But I don't like the fertilizers. It's just too complicated because we've got all the elements in separate bottles and dosing just becomes a nightmare. I like an all-in-one type like the API Leaf Zone is a good thing. Also the Pro, Pro Fito, the Easy Life one I've used. And there's a local product called Scape Complete. It's maybe not as good but just much easier to dose. But what if you want rooted plants like these Amazon swords that feed from the roots? Well, then you've got a problem because the substrate is inert. You can wait for your fish to keep on pooping and that will eventually work its way down into the sand or the gravel and your plants will feed on that. But it's a slow process and not the best. Or you can use root tabs, which is basically tablets or capsules or sticks that contain the nutrients that your plants need. Now, you can put them on a grid pattern on the bottom of a glass and put the sand or gravel over it. Or you can do like I've done in the past and just push the root tabs or sticks in the sand or gravel around the base of the plants. So what are the pros and cons? What are the advantages and disadvantages of having an inert substrate that's just sand or gravel? Well, first, there is a reason why it's popular among the beginners in the hobby. A more sort of aquarium co-op style, if you follow that big YouTube channel, Corey McElroy more sort of that style of fish keeping and that's that, that in the sense that it is simple. You wash the sand and the gravel and you add some root tabs and you put it on the bottom of the aquarium or you just wait for the fish poop to accumulate and eventually it'll work its way down and it's simple. And the other advantage of having an inert substrate like that is it's easy to move. So if you somebody who has to move from an apartment to another apartment or move aquariums around the house more regularly than I do, I would say it's the easiest system to move, even if you just want to pull out some plants 
and put others in or move them around in the tank. It always disturbs the plants and I don't think you should do it all the time. But that's going to be the least messiest substrate. It will be gravel and sand to move plants around. And if you have to move a tank, and, and it's not a tiny tank where you can just drain it and move it with a substrate and the hardscape like that, then it's the easiest way because you, you, you pull out the plants, you give it a good gravel vac, and you put it in buckets and off you go and you set it up on the other side. So that's another advantage of just having gravel or sand. It's easy to move. What are the disadvantages? Now, I'm not a fan of gravel, the coarse gravel on its own. It's all right if you, uh, in my days, that's what we had in the 80s. You know, we had gravel and maybe a bit of sand and that's what we worked with. And usually it doesn't work so great for plants in the beginning. But as a tank matures and stuff accumulates, the plants feed on that and it becomes better. But what I've always find, found with the coarse gravel especially is that it accumulates a lot of detritus and uneaten food if you're at the stage figuring out how much the fish eat and then you have to gravel back because sometimes it's too much detritus and uneaten food and that can cause all sorts of trouble if you're not really careful. So I found that the method of, of, of just keeping fish tanks with gravel and sand and I did it for years and years and years but I, I have found that it's a bit higher maintenance. You have to get in there with a gravel vac in between the plants now and then. If you only have uh, epiphytes like you saw in that video clip in, in, uh, my, in my previous incarnation of my 75 gallon, then you definitely have to move the stumps with a java fern around and gravel vac to get all that rubbish out. But I find it's higher maintenance and usually with a sand or a gravel substrates, you have about a two inch layer, five centimeters. And that's not quite deep enough for anox anoxic or anaerobic activity to form. So there's not something that breaks down the nitrate unless you have something in the filter. And I found it to be a higher maintenance system because in all my tanks I just had sand or gravel in it. The nitrates built up quite a bit quicker. So I had to do more partial water changes than I do now. So those are the pros and the cons of inert sand or gravel substrates according to me. Let me know in the comment section whether you disagree or whether you agree. Now number two we have dirted substrate and that basically entails putting a layer of soil this is a mixture of potting soil and compost and peat on the bottom of the aquarium no more than an inch 2.5 centimeters and you cap that with a thicker layer of sand it must be sand not gravel no more than one millimeter grain size. So that's called capping and then you make a total layer of around 3 inches 7.5 centimeters. Can be a bit less if it's more like the Wallstead method but I like 3 inches total. And there it goes and then eventually this is what it looks like. You've got a dirted substrate now. And as you can see it works pretty well for growing plants as you can see here. And guys, please remember to share the content among your fishy groups. I'll greatly appreciate that. Now, dirted tanks. Okay, as you can see right behind me, there's two dirted tanks. What do I like about the dirted substrate method? What I like is the obvious. It's cheap, right? Because getting some potting soil and compost and peat from your garden center, even the big bags, because you don't get them in little baggies for what you need, but you use the excess in the garden anyway, so it's not money wasted. Even with those big bags and, and the sand and whatever, it's still a lot cheaper than aqua soil, which we'll get to later. And it's cheap. That's the main attraction of it, I think, for many people. It works well, the plants grow well. And another advantage of it, because the way I do it, that father fish kind of style, you have a one inch of dirt and the two inches or, uh, of sand on top of it. And it, it's, it's got to be a three inch substrate the way I do it. Some people with a wall step method, method, they don't have quite as deep a substrate. But if you have a three inch substrate, my personal experience has been with my tanks. It lowers the maintenance a lot. The plants also has got something to do with it. But that deep substrate developed anaerobic or anoxic, I'm not sure which one is correct, but it doesn't matter. It develops a kind of bacteria that breaks down the nitrates, which with gravel and sand and thin substrates, you're going to have to remove with water changes. So the nitrate buildup is much, much slower and the nitrates in my tanks are much, much lower. And I find because of that, I need to do less water changes. The tanks also seem, the ecosystem seems a lot more solid to me. It really works well and it is more economical. 
but there are cons to the dirted method, you know. It is a bit complex, it requires a bit of measuring and a bit of work. It might put beginners off. I think the marketing of the method isn't also quite to our ears in South Africa. Dirt tank doesn't sound right. Um, you Amer in America, you, I think when you talk about dirt, you refer to what we refer to as soil, garden soil. Dirt to us sounds like something you sweep away out of your house. Now, so that already doesn't sound good, but I don't know what the better name is. If we call it a swelled tank, you know, then it, think, it look, sounds like you made a number two in the tank. So I don't know what the right name is, but it, that kind of make beginners nervous and it puts them off, even though it shouldn't be. And I think the other disadvantage of this dirted tank map method, the three inch substrate, if you have a nano tank or a, a shallow tank like one of these low boys, you know, it doesn't work so nice aesthetically because it takes up a lot of a water column. So I like to have a height of at least 35 centimeters, that's about 14 inches or, or even, even more, 16 inches, 40 centimeters to accommodate the, the, the space that the substrate takes up. So that space that the dirt that substrate takes in your tank, not too great for shallow or nano tanks is another disadvantage. And one disadvantage of a dirt tank I would say is, if you plant your plants, you must make sure you put them in the right spot. Because once they're there and once they are settled in and you pull them out, it makes one heck of a mess, as you can see in the clip here. It, it, just fall, it, just, it just pulls out the substrate, uh, the, the swell layer underneath the sand, and you have a heck of a mess. So it's okay to move a plant or one or two plants, take them out. I, I, I thin out the valleys near here, but I make sure that I catch those little runners early so I don't have to pull out a, a, a really big plant because it's messy. And because of that, but these tanks don't move well at all. Unless it's a small nano tank like the QB on my right, you just drain it down and you pick the whole thing up. That could work, but anything bigger than that, the substrate is heavy too. And you can't, like I've tried, you know, take out the plants and then just it, it just mixes and becomes a mess. So a dirted tank is not a tank that moves well. So think before you put it down. And so if you're going to move a lot from, you know, if you're in that young phase of your life, changing apartments, then maybe a dirt tank is not the best idea. Then I'll go for another bit method. But if you settled and the tank is going to sit there and you want something that's going to last for years and not break the bank, I think it's a great method of doing a planted tank. And now we go to number three, which is aqua soil. Now if I run the whole range, these are the Easter aqua soil. It's one of the cheaper ones, but aqua soil is never cheap. Then you've got Denele scaper soil and that is a, one of the better aqua swells and then the top of the range one the amazonia aqua swell now that's sort of sintered clay volcanic clay mostly i think in little balls and it contains a lot of the nutrients that your plant needs and here i've made a little beach of sand you can combine it with different substrates and there's the aqua swell but don't cap the aqua swell like you do with a dirt tank because it defeats the purpose the aqua swell absorbs nutrients like your fertilizers from the water as well and it creates a very natural look and plants grow very well in it here you can almost not see the aqua swell anymore because the plants have grown so well this carpet of hair grass just look at the roots there in the aqua swell you can see how it has spread itself around quite fascinating to see and that is aqua swell for you okay aqua swell what is a big advantage of aquaswell? One thing that I just love about aquaswell, it's like in earth substrates, easy, but it's even easier because there's no sand or gravel that you have to wash under the tap forever. That's a great thing. You just pour the aquaswell out of a bag and into the tank and you're ready to go. And that's one great thing about aquaswell. Another nice thing about aquaswell, it already contains a lot of nutrients in it but it also absorbs nutrients from your water column. So if you use liquid fertilizer, some will end up in the aquaswell as well and help your rooted plants too. So that's another really neat thing about aquaswell. I think those little black balls of sintered clay, I think it is, they look aesthetically good to me. And you know, you can also always just put parts of a tank under aquaswell and then have a little bit of sand, sandy patches here and there as long as you don't cover the aquaswell. So it's very diverse and it's great for uh, aquascaping if you want a high-tech tank and you want it to get going quickly. Because in a dirted tank, for instance, the roots have to find their way down the sand first. 
here it's directly in the aqueous well so that part of aqueous well is something i really like you know and then another thing about aqueous well but i have found i have this cube on my right well it was another tank but it was the same footprint same kind of cube i had it with aqueous well for a year and what i found with aqueous well even though you don't have as thick a layer as with a dirt that substrate you maybe only have two inches five centimeters or so is the aqueous well the, the middle of uh, apparently that's the fury behind it the middle of those little little soil balls uh, have a little anoxic or anaerobic zone that cultivates the bacteria the anaerobic bacteria that breaks down nitrate so i have found when i had the cube of aqueous well it did the similar thing that the dirt the deep dirt the substrate does if it, the nitrates in that tank the buildup was very very low there was almost no nitrate and it and, and it, it was a lot less maintenance for me remember it wasn't a high-tech system with co2 it was really low tech just with aqua swell so in that aspect i think aqua swell is also good for establishing an uh, uh, ecosystem what are the drawbacks of aqua swell well like the dirt that substrate it's messy to pull out plants and it's but not as messy as a dirt that substrate let's be honest and it's also very difficult to move you know because if you pick it up and put it in a bucket it, it's especially if it's older it tends to disintegrate so it's also not the easiest thing to move unless it's a nano tank which you can just pick up and then the obvious disadvantage of aqua swell is it's very expensive you get cheaper ones and more expensive ones like i've said but aqua swell is by far the most expensive of these three methods of doing a planted substrate but for the rest i think it's an excellent method I think another little disadvantage of aqueous well, if you you know, I think a mistake I made, if a layer is too thin, it doesn't hold onto the roots very well in the beginning. Now, so you have plants, especially stem plants, getting unstuck out of aqueous well and floating to the top. Counteract that by having at least an average depth of two inches or five centimeters. Maybe slope it up to the back where it's deeper, and you overcome that problem. But those, I think, are the pros and cons of the aqueous well. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. Please remember to subscribe and thank you to everybody who did. And as we remember to take good care of our domestic denizens of the deep, we're going to play out with this footage of this beautiful scarlet badass, one of my bucket list fishes. Mm -hmm.